the famine historian arrives with dessert. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, like Stephen, I'm really overwhelmed to be here to receive this honor, so I've written down a few comments, but I will speak quickly. Um, members of the Hall of Fame Committee, thank you for this award. Gurmaigav Dola. Fellow award recipients, congratulations on your work and being recognized today for your many contributions. Other distinguished guests, thank you for being here to share this joyous occasion. And I wanted to note a few people, Noel and Honora Kilkenny, Patricia Harty, um, Adrian Flannelly, Anya Sheridan, I don't know if they're here. Uh, of course, Dr. John Leahy, Lynn Bushnell, Tyler McConnell, uh, Grace Brady, Ruth Riddick, Neil O'Dowd. I'm so honored to be in your company today. Uh, I want to thank my students, past and present, two of whom are here today, Judy and Matt. Um, thank you for all that you teach me. And to my friends who cannot be here today, I want to thank them in their absence because they have become my American family. So you, you may have gathered that I am not American. And in fact, this is only my seventh year living in this country, which makes this award all the better and all the more, again, remarkable. My association with the United States does it extend back some years, though. I first came here in the 1980s when I was a young, impoverished student at Trinity College, Dublin. I came on a J-1 visa with my best friend, Bernadette Barrington. We had met at our first day at Trinity College, and we worked for a summer in Atlantic City. Yes. In the daytime, we were employed in a motel. Bernadette made the beds, I cleaned the bathrooms. In the evening, we worked for a large burger chain. Not McDonald's, I'm sorry. <laughs> Bernadette made double bacon cheeseburgers. I made big whoppers. We clearly impressed the management because at the end of the season, we were both offered a place at PKU. Burger King University. We politely declined. It was an intre interesting introduction to American culture. At that stage, I did not know that just over 20 years later, I would return to New Jersey, this time with my son Kieran and my Irish sheepdog Guinness, to be a professor of Irish history at Drew University. Nor could I imagine that in 2013, thanks to the vision and determination of one man, Dr. John Leahy, I would be appointed founding director of the Great Hunger Institute at Quinnipiac University. Nor did I dream that, only seven years after arriving at Newark Airport with my suitcase, my son, and our dog, I would receive this wonderful recognition. I am so glad I did not go to BKU. I'm especially delighted that Bernadette, who is still my best friend, has come over from Dublin to share this special day with me. We have both come a long way since Atlantic City, and we have shared much laughter, tears, and wine in those intervening years. To me, the words of the poet W.B. Yeats seem particularly appropriate. You that would judge me, do not judge alone this book or that. Think where men's glory begins and ends, and say my glory was I had such friends. I also want to pay tribute to my beautiful children, Siobhan and Kieran. As they've gotten older, they've come to appreciate the real value of my writing so many books. While I'm busy writing, I cannot be interfering in their lives. <laughs> Siobhan and Kieran, you have grown up to be amazing people. <laughs> Siobhan was born in Dublin in 1984. Kieran was born in Belfast in 1991. Both were born during the dark days known as the Troubles, albeit on different sides of the border. When we lived in war-torn Belfast in the early 1990s, 
we dared not hope that there would be a peace process in place by the end of the decade. The fact that it did happen was largely due to the involvement of Irish America, to the pressure, persistence, and passion of so many people who are present here today. And in particular, I would like to pay tribute to Neil O'Dowd and the Connolly House Group. As you have heard, my own research is on the tragic period of our history, known as the Great Famine, the Great Hunger, or the Great Starvation. This tragedy has cast a long shadow over the people of Ireland and her diaspora, but it has marked us as a people of tremendous resilience, compassion, and creativity. The vast majority of famine and post-famine emigrants came to the United States. These immigrants were not always welcome in their new adopted co country. Undaunted though, they came to love America and to become some of its most loyal citizens. But they also continued to love Ireland. For people who, during centuries of colonial rule, had been dispossessed, displaced, and often despised, their capacity to love not one but two countries was remarkable, as was their courage in believing there would be a better future for themselves and their children and for their children's children if they left the country of their birth. And the Irish who came to America showed their love for Ireland in practical ways. From those early impoverished immigrants who sent part of their hard-earned wages back to Ireland to later generations of emigrant who kept alive and supported Irish dreams of independence, those who promoted Irish culture, and those who, more recently, believed that a peace process was possible, and who intervened to make it possible at a time when many of us who were living on the island of Ireland had almost given up hope. For me to be a small part of that ongoing relationship, which enriches both nations and both peoples is an honor indeed. Thank you for this recognition. I accept it with humility and deep gratitude and with pride in being part of Irish America. Thank you.